If you place a scale inside a stationary aeroplane and put a one kilogram lump of metal on it, the scale shows one kilogram of weight. Flying straight and level, high up in the sky, the scale also shows one kilogram of weight. But when the aeroplane executes a balanced turn of 60 degrees angle of bank, the scale shows two kilograms of weight. This aeroplane is experiencing a load factor of positive 2g. The load factor is a ratio and it's defined as the wing loading in manoeuvre divided by wing loading in straight and level flight. Or put more simply, lift over weight. In straight and level flight, lift is equal and opposite to the aeroplane's weight. At a 90 degree angle of bank, however, the vertical lift component that opposes weight and keeps the aeroplane aloft is reduced to zero. The aeroplane does not maintain its altitude because the lift is completely horizontal. Let's have a look at a slightly more conventional 60 degree angle of bank. At 60 degrees, the lift is not entirely horizontal. Some of it points sideways and some of it points vertically up, opposite to the aeroplane's weight. This vertical lift component is still less than the opposite weight, so the aeroplane cannot maintain its altitude. To maintain altitude, the vertical lift component must be greater. By pulling back on the controls, the wings generate more lift. To achieve a 60 degree angle of bank balance turn, the lift must be doubled. Now the vertical lift component is equal and opposite to weight and the aeroplane maintains its altitude. In straight and level flight, the load factor is positive 1g. The load factor can be calculated by using this formula. For example, at 45 degree angle of bank turn, the load factor is a positive 1.4g. Load factor plotted on a graph against the angle of bank looks something like this. What do you think happens to the load factor when the aeroplane is flown straight and level upside down? Please leave a comment below.